Dr. Theo Champong, um, as I announced him earlier, um, is on the line with us. Thanks very much for your time. Um, and, and I'll begin from this point. You have said that um, it's right that the deal is cancelled. And you say uh, the Miracle-led consortium should never have been awarded the concession in the first place, just like John has been saying all along. They did not have the means to raise the necessary financing required to sustain the operations of such a critical national asset. Some of us raised this earlier, but were lampooned. Anyway, water under the bridge now. Going forward, let's get better institutional investors for the asset. There are private pension state funds in Ghana lying idle, including Ghana infrastructure investments. Um, and you say this is how we should begin to look at it. And obviously, uh, later on, Look at, look at an IPO so that there can be uh, Ghanaian participation by way of the citizens. Um, how exactly do you propose that government goes forward in the manner you suggest? Um, and I thought that it was really about money, and the money is what the US is, was going to give us, and now we don't have any more. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Um, Yes, it's, it's about money. Uh, the question is, where is the money going to come from? Of course, yes, the U.S. was proposing to give us part of the money, and then the private sector uh, participants coming in would have also raised in excess of $500 million over the five years needed to you know, maintain or keep up to the contractual obligations under the contract. But what was quite clear to you know most of us who are following development in the sector very own is that the consortium that is the miracle led one you know did not really did not really have the means to, to raise the finances so for example even with the with the with the insurance or the demand guarantee part of the money that was used you know to finance that came from ECG's own you know uh, operational cost OPEX the yeah shareholders under the concessionaire, only one of them was able to pitch in about a million dollars. But the remaining did not come from them. It mm. came from the operations of, of the company itself. Mm. And that should have you know, raised part of the, of the red flag at the very kind of initial stage uh, when this was being uh, uh, mooted. But like I said earlier, I think this is water under the bridge. What really, for me, is, is quite critical is that we need to move forward with this and learn very fundamental you know, lessons. And as Clara was saying, this approach, this management of it you know, has been shambolic from, from, from day one. And the political interference in how things are managed, especially when it comes to state-owned enterprises in Ghana, historically has, has always been you know, um, an, an issue. So that's why I think going forward, if we really want to turn around ECG, given that the uh, MCC money may not be coming anymore, then we have to look at other ways of financing. And I think that if you look domestically within Ghana, we have institutional investors, not just individuals who may not have the means, but if you took the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund, for example, they could actually pitch in some money and take some shares in that. And then, of course, there are private sector pension funds that are also um, available and can take a share in, in ECG. But beyond just providing the financing, I think what is really important is that the, we need a new management at, at ECG and a new management that will be able to actually turn around the fortunes of the company. And the management would have to, to sign you know, KPI. So I would, for example, want to see to what extent will be the remuneration of the management be tied to the ability to reduce you know, technical and commercial losses over three, four, five years? And that will be much more fundamental, I think, than even just uh, providing uh, money uh, to turn around the, the operations of ECG. There are two other things I just quickly want to raise. Besides the issue of money, we know uh, the issue of the non-payment of electricity bills by MDAs. 
Mm -hmm. And there's an interesting document that was authored by the government of Ghana called the Energy Sector Recovery Program mm -hmm. uh, back in May of 2019. Okay. And if I may just quote a little from it uh, in 6.3.3, it says, um, ECG has lost over $180 million of revenue annually because of non-payment. Mm -hmm. Of this amount, $150 million or 80% is non-payment by MDAs, ministries, department, agencies. So roughly almost you know, 80% of what you need, which was coming in from the MCC, is actually money that the government owes you know, uh, through non-payment. And I'm asking myself, so could we do without even the MCC amount? Clearly, it's obvious that we can raise the money internally, and even if government met its payment obligations to the MDAs, then we'll be, we'll be talking about more long-term uh, sustainable solutions. And then in terms of technical and commercial losses, I mean, back in 2018, it was about 23%, and that's roughly about $400 million of technical and commercial losses annually. We need some investment going in there in terms of upgrading the, you know, the box supply point um, and the metering stations uh, to 10 things around. But structurally, those investments, I would think that it would have to come from the private sector, but not necessarily of the form of the type that we saw in the Miracle-led consortium. I think we need to target institutional investors and particularly, you know, some of the pension funds and then the um, Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund. And then long term, once we've been able to potentially turn around, potentially look at, you know, doing an IPO of, of the back of, of that. There, there, there are some who have actually suggested that, look, in the first place, we didn't need to be running around looking for any support or any money to resuscitate or get uh, ECG working well. And that you don't need private participation for this. The ECG people, they are competent to do this work. They are able to um, manage the company in a way that all of us will be satisfied with. And we don't need all the money that is actually being bandied about, but, and that in fact, we need less of that money. So the real thing appears to be what you also suggest, the political interference with the management. How exactly do we get to cut that out? Yeah, so I think part of the solution to dealing with the so-called political inter interference is actually having you know, private sector-led participation in it. If the government is so inclined to say ECG is a strategic national asset, you know, for example, then yes, you can still set up an SPV, you know, arrangement, but take, you know, 20, 30 percent shares in it. Mm. And then let others come in with expertise that would actually be, uh, allow them to run the company more profitably. The problem has been that if the state is appointing the CEO, the state is appointing board members, you know, and at the same time, the state through the Ministry of Finance is the one that may be, you know, injecting monies into ECG, then the state becomes complicit in the, in the whole process. Mm. And that's precisely part of the reason that I think that you actually need different institutional investors coming in, and that allows the government to pull itself out, out of the whole process for one, um, but in a way that they will still be able to have uh, some minimum shareholding in there and may still have representation on the board. But the day-to-day -day decision making wouldn't, you know, necessarily come from from uh, the government or the sector ministry, because the set of incentives that the private sector-led participation would bring would be entirely different from 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 the government. Mm. So, as far as you are concerned, the institutional uh, buy-in you have looked at pension funds, among other things. Many times, I've heard people say that what ECG is grappling with is obsolete, you know, equipment, and it's, it suffers uh, commercial and technical losses of about 30% every year. Um, percent actually. Right. Now, we have, we have 3 million, or how much is it that came to us first? It is only one, one, 190 that has been taken away. Do we have any signs or evidence of what has already come in, what it has been used to do to transform it, 
and do we have any assurance that we are able to proceed without this support? I, I think we can actually go without the, the support. Okay. Uh, the fundamental question, Samson, I think, is mm. that given where we are now, if the money does not come in, what do we do with ECG? Mm. And from where I sit, you know, uh, within the whole energy uh, sector in Ghana, ECG is like the Achilles heel in, in all of that. The, the indebtedness in the sector is about $2.7 of which ECG alone owes 1.1 billion. And back in Dollars. June, you know, some IPPs were even threatening to shut down their operations, you know, and not provide power because of non-payment of bills mm. by uh, the, the invoices that they are submitted to, to ECG. And we're even threatening, you know, uh, to um, trigger the partial risk guarantee under some of the uh, PPAs. Mm. You know, so we need to address those issues, technical commercial losses. The question is the how. And I think that if the MCC money is not coming in, there's enough resources domestically in Ghana that we can actually raise to turn around the operations of ECG. Um, number two, we need to move the whole government interference, you know, in the running of operations of ECG, mm. um, you know, uh, away from, from, from the state. And part of the way to do that is through a new shareholding you know, or SPV, you know, arrangement that brings in the, you know, uh, institutional as well as potential um, um, IPO where individuals can own shares in, in ECG. Mm -hmm. Number three, long term, is that the government actually needs to pay its bills. So, you know, for all the hue mm -hmm. and cry, mm -hmm. it's $190 mm -hmm. million dollars that was yeah. coming in from uh, uh, MCC. Okay. For all right. I so mentioned the fact that yeah, I like to thank you very much. But there's there's a small there's a small thing I need you to to respond to. Uh, when you you are you are proposing institutional you know investment, that is government. So how are we going to deal with you know getting government to take its hands off uh, this very important you know installation? Sorry, could you please come again? The line is a little I'm thing. saying that part of your proposals as to the way forward, particularly relying on pension funds and the rest of them, that is, that is government coming you know, into it through a different way. So when you say we need to get the political interference out, if we use that route, we, we will never you know, get government out. Yeah, but the as in political interference out. I'm not talking only about GIF or the pension pension fund. Okay. Uh, there are private pension pots that are around, mm. and there are other you know um, uh, equity uh, or mutual funds that also we can we can tap to. But what they bring in fundamentally is that you would have different shareholders in the company, mm. and each of them uh, would be weighted, or their representation on the board mm. would be weighted according to the equity that they're bringing into the company. All right. Number two, mm. it means that they'll be able to actually hire and fire the CEO mm. of the company, and that wouldn't be at the you know, uh, request. Or All right, Dr. Thierry Champong, thank you very much for your time. Dr. Thierry Champong is economist, political risk analyst, and senior fellow of Imani Africa.